We're now ready to add some uh, grungy lens effects to our scene and also um, give the camera a bit of camera shake as the object passes uh, the camera. So I'll just make my workspace a bit larger here. Go to fit. Um, and we're going to import some kind of dirty grunge texture. Um, and I've uh, created or edited edit one here called Glass Dirty Scratches. We can drag that above the planet and moon layer there. Obviously it's much too big, so we can hold down shift and resize that to uh, until we're happy. Okay, and then we need to change the blending mode. Um, you can play around to see which one you're happy with, but screen will probably work best for this. So go to screen. Um, and we're not going to want to see this for the entire um, duration as, as it is like this. So you can drag, go, you can go down to your transform options here. Um, what I will do though is just find a point in time where the lens flare enters the camera. At this point in time, I wouldn't mind if the screen was almost that grungy. And so I'll go down to all well, that visible. So I'll go down to the opacity and activate keyframing at the point in time where the light enters the frame so that the moment it enters it is at 100% but when we can't see the lens flare we can drag that down to something much less if, drag it down to about 15% if you want and this will just allow you to see some of the um, scratches on the camera lens um, just around the edges there and then as, as the lens flare gets much smaller you can then eventually have it go back down to 15% further on as well. So this should just increase in opacity as a lens um, as it passes the camera. Um, I might just drag this to there as well. Drag the keyframe that was there and drag the left a bit. So again we've got some acceleration on this. So it gets goes from 100% to 40% really quick and then trails off from there a bit, in, uh, a bit slower. Kind of like the light does as well. And uh, if you are not happy with all the scratches and stuff um, covering up your planet, so I can see some scratches going on here, you can even add a mask to your image. I'll just go create a, a circle mask like this. Maybe I'll uh, drag these, or if you click and drag, you can sort of click on the corner point to make them oval. And the mask, just go to mask and go to inverted and go to the feather and obviously make the feather really big, um, maybe even up to a thousand pixels. And if you feel the mask you've drawn isn't big enough, you can just go to mask expansion and drag and have a play around with that as well, um, like this. And then you can select all of your keyframes, or sorry, all of your little edge points here and move them up like that. Um, and so it just means at this point in time when you may be able to see some of the edge scratches around the corners of the frame but for the most part it's pretty clean and uh, that's that might look look better but as a lens flare goes past the camera I want I do want to see the middle bit sort of a, a bit more to do this I'm going to go to mask expansion and find a point in time before the lens flare enters the frame and just act, put a keyframe or activate keyframing there which means at that point in time we can see our planet pretty much uninterrupted with scratches. As the the moment the lens or the lens flare enters the frame, however, I want it to have a, a huge impact on um, the whole shape. So what I've got to do in mask expansion is just type in like I can type in minus 1,000 pixels, and now the mask will be tiny to the point where it doesn't actually have any effect whatsoever. And then as the lens flare gets further past the camera. I can then copy the first keyframe, so I've dragged it, I've dragged to select it, Control C, and go maybe over here and do Control V again, and um, it will just mean that the as the lens flare approaches the camera, it sort of crops in like that, and then as it gets further away, and um, the middle becomes more visible, and so and there's just some simple animation techniques or keyframing techniques to make uh, get a dirty lens effect on there. So now to create the shaky camera, I'm going to 
uh, select the planet, moon and stars pre-composed layer and just drag down. I'm going to collapse everything except transform. So we can see here we have keyframed rotation. Uh, and now, just before the lens flare passes the camera, which is just about here, I'm going to keyframe the position. So maybe do it just before maybe just a few frames before the, the, the lens is even apparent like this. So I'll just go to keyframe position there. And then maybe about 20 frames later, or maybe a quarter of a second later, sorry, um, the lens flare is now visible. Uh, and then, so I'm going to have the camera sort of shaking for all this, all this time like that. So I've keyframed that one there. I'm now going to zoom in. If you just alt and scroll in quite far, um, move your time slider. So zoom in so far that you can actually move your time slider by frames, and you can see each frame sort of like this. Um, so that's as far as I can zoom in pretty much, um, or as far as I need to, so I can see it moves at one frame at a time now. I'm going to move it two frames, and then I'm going to move the planet, moon, and stars up just a bit. I'm going to move it another, whoops. That's it. And I'm going to move them down again over here. And if you zoom into the middle, we can sort of see some of these lines and we can see where the planet's going to be moving around or bouncing around to. And then another two frames. I'm just going to have it going maybe back to the middle a bit. Maybe just a bit more aggressive like that because the, the lens flare is now just past the camera. And once it's past the camera, things are going to calm the, the shock wave, as it were, of the ship's going to get a bit less intense um, because it's now going away from the camera. And so you can start to just move these randomly, but less far away from each other uh, as, the, as it eventually settles down. And then have it settling back down to something like that. And maybe I'll just give it one slight final wobble. And again, this will work only if you have some space left outside of your uh, composition area to play with. So now that I've given it a bit of camera wobble, I'm just going to um, preview that effect. So if I go and hit play, let's wait for that to buffer those camera movements in. It might be a bit too intense. So I would say that was a bit too intense. So I, you could go back down to each keyframe and move them slightly closer together so that the uh, camera doesn't move quite as far. So if you click on these keyframes, you should be able to see them in the middle. And if you want to do this really quickly, I can just zoom in and move all of these sort of keyframes closer together like this, um, just so it doesn't have quite as an intense effect. And then if I zoom back out, whoops, over half here, I'll go to fit and then hit play again. It should work quite nicely. That might, that might be all you need. You, you could have it settling down a bit more as it gets further away, but um, that will generally do the trick and just make it look a bit more impressive um, as it passes the camera.